Good morning and welcome to the Virtual Sunday School of the Mount Zion Primitive Baptist Church located at 2350 Wall Drive Highway where our pastor is Elder Dr. Mile L. Burwell. Our pastor will be sharing Sunday School highlights with us this morning. Our lesson is the faith of Abraham coming from Romans chapter 4 verses 1 through 12. Thank you for joining us. gather for our Sunday school time. Let me certainly appreciate you for watching us this morning, now, whether you're at home or wherever you're listening on radio or YouTube, we appreciate your, your watching. The Lord blessed us again to come to uh, share the Word of God so we understand it and know it. This is Unit 2. Uh, the name of our lesson this morning uh, comes from a series of Confident Hope. This is Lesson 7, uh, The Faith of Abraham. is our title lesson, the printed text is uh, Romans 4, verses 1 through 12. Oftentimes, people that are looking for someone to trust look for people that are older than they are. And because they find that older than they assume they can be trusted better. And so the writer today helps us to understand that the Jews were considering because Abraham was older and wiser than their forefather, they were the one they should be trusted. And, and our lesson today is to help us to understand some things um, as we start our lesson today, the difference between faith and works is manifest in the life of Abraham, the reflect of knowledge and wisdom, as Paul sings his understanding of the Old Testament and identifies the way uh, that we reply to those relationships with God. The aim of our lesson, uh, and the aim of our lesson this morning, uh, is that we understand the difference between tradition and uh, how to identify a relationship. Uh, so many times we get relationships and uh, traditions mixed up. Uh, and so it is in our lesson this morning. Uh, the people that we want to talk about this morning is Abraham and the, uh, the, the uh, Jews and the Gentiles. The uh, person of Abraham, Abraham is, uh, as you know, uh, from Ur, uh, Chaldean territory. Um, he is a descendant of Noah, and because he a descendant of Noah, uh, Noah had blessed him when he had backed up him with one of his brothers and covered him. Uh, he is also a um, descendant of Shem. This lesson takes place, um, the writing comes from us by Paul, somewhere between the uh, year of uh, 56 AD and 58 uh, AD. Paul is in Corinth and he's writing to the people at Rome. He wanted them to understand that the dilemma that they had uh, was between tradition and that of salvation. Um, the people were concerned because uh, they remembered when uh, they were escorted out uh, in 49 AD by Emperor Claudius uh, because of the uh, territory situation. Uh, but after he had died in 54, the Gentiles came back, and when they returned, they found that the Gentiles were leading uh, the Christian con the congregations, and they were concerned because these Gentiles were not circumcised. Paul writes now to help them to understand the difference between uh, tradition and that of relationship. Uh, the fact that we all help us to that helps us today with our understanding uh, that faith comes by nothing else. Uh, salvation is by faith and, and faith alone. Uh, there is there's three outlines this morning. Uh, the first outline is a faith builds relationship. It is uh, verses 1, 2, and 3. The second outline is faith becomes righteousness. It is verses 4 through 8. And the, uh, the last outline is faith begins work. It is verses 9 through 12. Uh, again, our, our title this morning for our lesson is, uh, is that of uh, from Union 2, Covenant Hope. Our title today is Faith of Abraham. Let us bow. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for the privilege of looking into your word. Open our understanding, Lord, as we look in your word. Help us to be better of what we learn in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
The first I'll begin with is, uh, is that uh, one that uh, it says to us that we we ought to um, be reminded uh, that about faith, it is a faith built relationship. Verses one, two, and three. Here's a reading of those verses. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to flesh, has found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he would have therefore a glory, but not before God. For what faith, the scripture, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Verses one, two, and three help us to realize that, that it, is, it is by faith, it is by faith. They looked to Abraham. Abraham asked this wonderful question that he wanted them to discover the difference between justification and work. Abraham says it like this. Abraham says to them that he's discovered uh, that, that God had made Abraham righteous. God had made him righteous. And since God had made him righteous, uh, it, is, it, is, it is not by works, but he had made him righteous by faith. Uh, if God deals uh, with work alone, then he'd have something to boast about. Look at verse 2. Verse 2 simply says that, that if Abraham had did it himself, and there had been a work involved, then Abraham could boast about it. But since there was no work involved, then Abraham had no reason to boast of, of his work. Faith, brothers and sisters, comes by, uh, by belief. And, and certainly our, our belief in Christ is about justification only in faith. Um, that's why it is said this way, that we're justified by faith. Uh, the sovereign God that we serve uh, gives it to us in such a way that we know it had to be by him and him alone. Um, they use the name Abraham, and it's interesting when you get some time. Genesis chapter 15, verse number 6, helps us to understand the setting of what Paul is writing about. Uh, Abraham was just off a great victory. He had just uh, taken 318 men, and he had conquered four kings. And uh, he had uh, rescued Lot from uh, the hand of these men. And somehow he drifted off into, into a sleep. And, and while sleeping and thinking about the goodness of God, um, he began to think about the fact that he'd been in the land for 10 years and still did not have an heir. Uh, in a dream, he heard God's voice. God spoke to him and said, don't be afraid, but I'll be your shield and your great reward. Uh, Abraham said, Lord, what can you give me because I, I, don't have a, I don't have an heir to give it to. God said to Abraham, and Abraham, he says, count the stars. Uh, so if you can count them. And if you can't count, if you can count them, so shall be your heir. God gave him a promise that, that, that his heirs would be like the stars. God, God's going to do what he said do. And, and so God, and the, and the Bible said, and the Bible said that Abraham believed God. When God said to him that I'm going to give you heirs so numerous that you can't count them, uh, the Bible said that God believed Abraham, that Abraham believed God. And for that, God counted him righteous. Hadn't done anything but believe. And, 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 and so verses 1, 2, and 3 simply helps us to believe, helps us to know that faith builds relationship. The very moment that we come into faith with God and believe what he says, then God gives us uh, uh, th that, that faith that we need to have great relationship. Um, Paul, Paul is the great lawyer for, for grace. Uh, bless God for Paul. Paul talks to us about, about the, the grace that God has. Uh, Abraham had done anything about, about had Abraham had done no kind of work. He had simply just believed. Brothers and sisters, when we believe, we are justified by, uh, by our belief. Uh, our faith in Christ, our faith in him, moves us to relationship with him. And we have a relationship with Christ. We then have our faith level to the point that we have our salvation. Our salvation in Christ comes by believing. Only by believing. Only by believing, not anything else. Abraham believed God and it was credited unto him righteousness. That's verses 1, 2, and 3. 
Um, our, our second outline is uh, faith comes, faith becomes righteousness. Faith becomes righteousness. Uh, let me read those verses to you. Verses four. Not to him that worketh is the reward not for reckon of grace, but of death. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David had also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man in whom the Lord will not impute sin. A second outline, faith becomes relationship. Uh, we've, we've learned already that our relationship must be based on faith. Uh, we've learned that already. Now, now, now faith becomes righteousness. Here's how it works. Here's how it works. Um, um, the problem that the Jews had was paradoxical. The problem that they had is that, is that it seemed to be a misnomer. It seemed to be a contradiction to them. Really what we were saying is this, listen to this. Uh, 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 Paul was saying to them that God could justify the ungodly. Uh, the Old Testament, they have read uh, the law, and the law said, the law said that, that, that God would punish the unwicked, God would punish the wicked, and, and, and the wicked should surely not get away. Uh, how is it possible that the guilty uh, could be justified? Exodus 23 and verse 7 says, I will not acquit the guilty. Uh, Paul is saying now that a guilty man uh, can be righteous before God and not do any work. You know, it seems good when we think about it. Um, uh, when, a, when, a, when a man is working and doing all that he can do and you say to him, God understands uh, God knows his heart, and, and he's going to surely make it because he's a hard worker. And then all of a sudden, someone that seems to be not doing anything, but he repents. Uh, I thought about the man on the cross uh, when he said, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. Uh, I need to come on and tell you that, that, that God rewards us, brothers and sisters, because of our faith. Because of our faith. It, it is by faith, brother. It is by faith alone. There is a doctrine called uh, sola um, uh, epidai. It that, that, that simply says that it is by faith and faith alone. Uh, sola epidai. It simply says it is by grace, uh, faith alone. Brothers and sisters, all of us have seen it. Every one of us that come short of the glory of God. None of us could do anything that would, that would entitle us to salvation. And so again now, again now, uh, uh, Paul lifts up uh, another person from the Old Testament to bring home this point. This is what he's saying. He, he lifts up David. He, he lifts up David. Uh, verse 6 and 8 talks about David. David himself calls himself righteous. Paul calls him righteous twice. That, that, there it is. He says he's blessed. In verse 7, he says he's blessed. In verse 8, he says he's blessed. In verse 6, he says he's blessed. Brothers and sisters, David understood that God could make you righteous in forgiving your sin, not by your own work. Uh, let, let, let's take a moment and look into David. Uh, David was joyful and blessed by the fact that God had 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 relieved him, uh, given him some relief of his sin. Uh, you remember Bathsheba? Uh, you remember Uriah? Uh, 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 he coveted Bathsheba. Uh, he coveted her, he committed adultery with her, and then he murdered her husband. Uh, and, and, and the Bible says, the Bible said that, that God forgave him. Uh, 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 he counted it righteous because God forgave him. The Bible declared that David was a man after God's own heart. So David says to you and I that a man is blessed when he is relieved from his sin debt. Uh, he says, blessed is the man whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. It is the blood of Christ. It is the relationship that we have with God that covers our sins. So, so here we go. The, our outline says that faith uh, becomes righteousness. 
When we believe God, when we take on God's word, when we say to him that we believe him, we fall into the place where David and Paul is. We become blessed because the fact that God has covered us from our sin by our faith. We've done no work for it. We can't boast about it. It is by faith and faith alone that we have salvation. Now let's look at it again. The Jews, when they came back into the land, found these, these, um, these, these Gentiles that had not been circumcised. And they said, they need to be circumcised. Paul said that their relationship and their salvation has nothing to do with circumcision. It is by faith and faith alone. And so it is, he lifts up again, David. David is a man after God's own heart that has been forgiven of his sin. Not by works, not by sin. Circumcision is simply by faith. But and sisters, nothing we can do can atone for our sin. All the hope we have is that God would give us righteousness through faith. That, 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 that's our second outline. It, it, is, it, is, it is simply based, simply based on faith. Uh, faith becomes righteousness. How good it is to know that we have righteousness uh, by faith. Our third and final outline is faith begets work. Faith begets work. Uh, Paul's still talking to, 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 to these uh, uh, Jews uh, that are concerned about salvation. Uh, the verses, again, uh, verses 9 through 12, and faith begins work out our last outline. Let me read that to you. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcised also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was this then reckoned when he was in circumcision or uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness of faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of them that believe. Though they not be circumcised, that circumcision might be imputed unto them also. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of faith by our father Abraham, which is, had been yet uncircumcised. The argument that Paul draws here is that there is a gap between. The Jews were declaring that Abraham, and when we started, we said sometimes we looked to our forefathers, our older people for faith factors, they were believing that because Abraham, the law declared that everybody must be circumcised. Uh, they were declaring that in order to have salvation, in order to be uh, in the body of Christ, uh, they had to be circumcised in order to, in order to be Jewish. Uh, but God, Paul says, uh, God had counted him righteous, given him salvation before he was ever circumcised. Let's prove that. Uh, Genesis uh, chapter 15, verses 4 through 6, uh, talks about when um, Abraham received the promise. We talked about that already, when he, re he received the promise. Uh, but in Genesis 16 and 16, Abraham got weary and tried to help God. You remember when Haggai and Ishmael, uh, uh, when, 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 uh, when, when he did that, that was a period of some 13 years uh, uh, before uh, his son was born, Abraham. Uh, so if you count the years, the 13 years back, and you think about the fact that he was 88 when it happened, and he was 99 and uh, he was finally got an heir, uh, and not until he was 99 and with an heir did the whole household uh, become circumcised. So that means that as a Gentile, Abraham, and not Abram, uh, he, he was counted unto righteousness. When, when, when God said to him, can you count the stars? Uh, so I'll give you an heir. Uh, the Bible said that he counted righteousness uh, because he believed. Uh, even after trying himself to get an heir with Ishmael and uh, Hagar, uh, only after the heir came, when he was 99 years old, uh, some 13 years later, did the whole household become circumcised? 
I'm saying to us today that what, what, what the author is saying is that, is that God counted him righteous for his belief even when he was Gentile. Here's what that does for you and I. What that does for you and I is that not only is it not for the, the uh, Jew, but for the Gentile alone, Paul asked the question, there it is. He said, how can you reckon it? Is it for the circumcised or the uncircumcised? He answers the question, he gives us the answer in verse nine. He said, faith was working by Abraham for righteousness. God has given to you and I the same principle, whether we're Jew or Gentile, all of us have the right to believe. And so we have the right to believe, once the very moment that we believe, uh, then, then it is by that faith of belief that we have salvation. Um, Brothers and sisters, Abraham accepted the gift, and so can you and I. The outline that he said that faith begins work. Because, because we believe God, because we act on what we know, we then have salvation. Here's, here's, here's the lesson. Let's wrap the lesson up in a, in a nice little neat ball and, and, and declare the end. Um, God says to us, he says to us that faith builds relationship. Uh, Abraham received faith from God uh, and he believed what God said. Uh, the very moment that, that he, he said to him that, that I'm going to give you heirs, Abraham believed it. And the Bible said that we believe and we know it to be so that God counted righteous unto him. Still a Gentile, God counted righteous unto him. Uh, no work had been played. It's simply by his faith. Remember, remember what I said, the doctrine of sola fide? It, it simply said, by faith alone, and by faith alone, nothing else gives us our salvation. So, so we have faith in God simply because we believe. We cannot work it. We can't sing enough. We can't come to church enough. We can't pray enough. We can't give enough. There's nothing we can do to make us entitled to faith. God gives us faith enough to believe, and when we believe, we get salvation because we believe. All right, so faith builds that relationship. And then faith becomes our righteousness because we have that faith that make a difference how wicked we were because all have sinned, every person, there's no one too wicked that they cannot be saved. There's no one that, 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 that has done too much wrong uh, there, there's none that have been good enough that they don't need to have salvation. So, so every person is available to this salvation. They must believe. You must believe that God has saved you by the blood that was shed on Calvary. If you believe that, that Christ lived a sinless life, if you believe that, that he died for our sins, if you believe that he rose again, you can be saved. It is by faith and faith alone. It's that first faith that counts in righteousness. So when you're born again. That, that, that's what being born again is all about. It's the justification. What God does, he imputes righteousness into you through himself. God gives you his righteousness. He becomes your righteousness because you believe in him. The third in the bottom of line is, is, is faith begins God's work. Uh, every person, every person. Every person, no matter who they are or what they are, uh, can and will be saved. Not, 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 not just Jews, not just Gentiles, but every person, I should say, can be, not will be, can be saved that believe. It is, it, is, it is by your faith, and by your faith it creates relationship, and your faith outdoes your work. It, it begins, it, it outdoes your work. It is by your faith. So Abraham was counted faithful, and because his belief, you can be faithful by your belief. Uh, our, our goal today is to believe God. Our, our theme, remember, our theme in the beginning was confident hope. We've got to have confident hope that God will see us through. That concludes our lesson for today. A short outline, a short review of what our lesson is. Hope you get a chance to read it and study it for yourself. I thank you for listening. I pray God will bless you and that he will keep you. We thank you so much for being a part of our Sunday school this morning. We invite you to join us next Sunday morning as our lesson will be entitled Justification Through Faith, coming from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. We look forward to worshiping with you this morning at 1015 a.m. for in-person worship. We pray that you'll be able to join us this morning at 1015 a.m. God bless you and have a wonderful Sunday.